Hey! I told you to take that jacket off. You'd have to kill me to get this jacket off. Sometimes it's nice to step away from all the BS that modern Hollywood seems to spew out these days, like The Acolyte, and go watch an actual good movie. Who knew that that good movie would be The Bike Riders, a movie about a bunch of mostly straight white males in a motorcycle gang? But exactly what made The Bike Riders a good movie, and will it perform well at the weekend box office going forward? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the cesspool that is modern Hollywood. Before we get into this, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out with continuing to grow and it's totally free. So if you're new to the channel, you may not know that I live stream with a couple of very cool cats in Since Corner and deleted scenes. Every so often when Regal or AMC does mystery movie nights, we stream our thoughts after the movie. And we've gotten some good movies, some bad movies, and stuff in between. This last time was a movie called The Bike Riders. Now, I have to confess that I had no intention of watching this film in theaters. For me, it was a streaming viewing at best. But I was pleasantly surprised that this was the movie that the theater decided to show us. Set in the 1960s, the film follows the rise of the Vandals MC, a Chicago outlaw motorcycle club. The film takes us through the early days of what led up to starting the club and throughout its life and evolution. Seen through the lives of its members and their families, the club evolves over the course of a decade from a surrogate family for local outcasts into a violent organized crime syndicate, threatening the original founder's unique vision and way of life. The story is told in a retrospective style from the point of view of Kathy, the girlfriend, and later wife of one of the members, Benny, played by Austin Butler. She tells the story of the club to one of the hangers-on who is writing a book about the club. In broad strokes, the movie's plot is fairly simple. Johnny, played by Tom Hardy, starts a motorcycle club mostly to formalize his group of friends that love motorcycles. Benny joins a bit later and is a bit of a newbie on the motorcycle but gradually learns the ropes. One night, in order to impress Kathy, played by Jodie Comer, he takes her out on a wild ride. It was love at first sight. But as the club continues to grow and grow, its reach extends across the country, which ends up changing the ethos and spirit of what its founding members stood for. A gradual, barely noticeable change begins permeating through the club and its members. The film does a great job making the subtle change with scenes of people getting into drugs and smaller petty crimes, something Johnny never intended. So he wanted Benny to take over the club to continue its original vision, but ever the reluctant hero, Benny could never really bring himself into that leadership role, and by the end of the film, we see that he was all the better for it. I often harp on good story, good character development, good cinematography, good acting, and good writing being largely absent from today's movies. We've gotten inundated with cheap, lazy sequels for blockbuster comic book movies that have largely run their course. Because of that, there's been a bifurcation in the industry. On the one hand, you have these big, massive blockbusters, and on the other hand, you've got ultra-small indie films and pretty much nothing in between. What am I talking about when I say the in-between? Well, remember movies like Home Alone, Meet the Parents, Seven, and Role Models? All those movies fit a pretty mid-range budget of between 20 and 40 million dollars, and they've largely been missing from Hollywood these days. Who the hell is in charge? A bunch of accountants trying to make a dollar into a dollar ten? I wanna work. I wanna build something of my own. How do you not understand that? And Don Draper is right. Don't get me wrong. Hollywood and cinema has always been a business, but the business side never got in the way of good creative as they have been lately. Dollars and cents, ladies and gentlemen. But isn't it better to have a $20 million movie rake in $80 million rather than risking $300 million to barely break even or lose money? And this is where a movie like The Bike Riders comes in. This is the movie that gets people's asses into theater seats. It's a well-written narrative acted out with great care and professionalism with great character development and story arc. What more could one possibly ask for? If this movie was made back in the 90s, it would have been mostly lost in a sea of similar movies. But over the course of the dark age of cinema over the last 10 to 15 years, a movie like The Bike Riders is a rare gem in a big pile of turds. 
This is the type of movie that Hollywood needs to produce more of if they don't want to go bankrupt. As far as the acting is concerned, everyone turned in a great performance. Tom Hardy even tried to get his Marlon Brando on, and the movie sort of broke the fourth wall with the scene where he's watching one of Brando's movies. Likewise, Austin Butler steals a scene with his stoic portrayal of Benny. A stoic male character who doesn't whine like a little bitch or throw a temper tantrum? Gee, who would have thought that that kind of character would resonate with audiences? People want to see themselves in movies, and it's kind of hard when all we get is weak beta male soy boys and infallible Mary Sue girl bosses. And that's where this movie's performances shine with Jodie Comer playing Kathy. At no point is she annoying, overbearing, or a girl boss like all modern films have been portraying. She plays the quiet, timid girl who grows into a more confident, mature woman throughout the story. And might I add, she is cute as hell with that cat eye lash liner. Wowza! Is this a movie you should see in theaters? Yeah, absolutely. Will it remain in theaters for long or will we see it on streaming in a few weeks? That's just the thing. If studios were smart, they'd keep movies in theaters longer. Because once they go to streaming, they're lost in a sea of other disposable content. And it would be a real shame for that to be the case with the bike riders. But what do you guys think about all this? Did you like the bike riders? And if so, would you like to see more movies like that? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one. Okie dokie. Yeah.